Okay, time for RPG 20 questions. Uh, question number one, ability score generation method. I use core book standard for whatever role playing game I'm playing, straight up. Number two, how are death and dying handled? Uh, generally, um, core book standard, if we're talking about D&D, I'm actually uh, partial to the death at zero, or at least dying at zero, no negative hit points. Um, so, I'm a little old schooler like that. Uh, number three, what about raising the dead? Zombies? Yes. Uh, raising, returning people from death to living status? No. Number four, how are replacement PCs handled? Um, usually I just bring, uh, bring in a new character at around the same, about the same experience level as uh, the average party level. Uh, number five, initiative, individual, group, or something else. Um, I usually use book standard. I have no problem with either individual or group-based initiative. I suppose I favor individual. Number six, are there critical hits and fumbles? How do they work? Yes, I love critical hits. Um, I, uh, I am particularly fond of games that actually incorporate them as part of the core rules. If they are not in the core rules, I will usually find ways to add them. Critical fumbles, I really don't use all that often. Um, usually failing a, failing a check is punishment enough that I don't feel that a fumble is needed, but if there's a particularly uh, humorous scenario that could come out of a fumble, um, I might throw those in every once in a while. Uh, number seven, do I get any benefit for wearing a helmet? Yes, I actually prefer games that uh, in account for hit locations and then uh, where armor is actually stopping power basically and so if you are wearing a helmet and you take a hit to the head guess what you've got an extra layer of protection um, eight can I hurt if can I hurt my friends if I fire into melee or do something similarly silly yes do not fire bows at your at your uh, enemies who are standing right next to your friends uh, number nine, will we need to run from some encounters or will we, will we be able to kill everything? There are times when you, uh, I'm not going to make you run, but uh, just recognize that uh, when you pick fights, be prepared for the things that you are picking fights with. Um, level 10, uh, or number 10, level draining monsters, yes or no? I generally don't play games or prefer games that have level-based systems, um, but in D&D &D or something like that, level draining is fine, I don't care. Um, number 11, are there going to be cases where a failed save results in PC death? Yes. Um, I am not an opponent of the idea of, you know, save or die, but <clears throat> usually that means that if characters are facing against things with save or die abilities, they should know um, and I will give them forewarning that they are going into dangerous waters, and if they decide not to try to run or not to try to strike a deal with these things that could kill them, then, well, that's just the way it is. Number 12, how strictly are encumbrance and resources tracked? I don't really bother with encumbrance unless you're trying to do something silly like carrying, a, you know, an armoire on your back or something like that. Um, so I, I really don't pay too too much specific attention to it. Resources like food and lighting and stuff like that I do track a little more um, diligently. Uh, I just basically ask the players to make sure that they're tracking ammo and stuff like that on their own character sheets and um, I will only intervene if I feel like something is being um, um, if something's being manipulated in the wrong way you know like if I've noticed that you haven't refilled your quiver and you've fired like 30 arrows this adventure, well I'll say, okay, uh, how many arrows do you have? Number 13, uh, what's required when my PC gains a level? Training? Do I get spells automatically? Can it happen in the middle of an adventure, or do I have to wait for downtime? No leveling in the middle of adventures. Uh, again, I don't prefer games that actually have level-based systems, but generally speaking, I only hand out experience points at the end of an adventure, and you can only spend those experience points at the end of, you know, between adventures. Or if there's a really, really protracted uh, period of time, of downtime in the middle of an adventure, you know, like a couple of weeks on the road or something like that, then I'll allow uh, players, player characters to 
to earn to spend experience points and level up. No, tr no specific training is usually required unless what you're trying to, you know, level up in or what skills you're trying to acquire uh, were things that wouldn't make any sense otherwise. Like you, if you never picked a pocket in the entire adventure and you suddenly decide that you want to increase your pickpocket skill, well, you better have a good ex explanation for how you're doing that. Um, number 14, what do I get experience for? Achievement. I have a, I usually do what I call achievement based experience which is really two factors. How much did the PCs accomplish over the course of an adventure? In other words, generally how many kind of encounters did they engage in? How many NPCs did they communicate with and get information from? Um, basically how much did they do? And how easy or how challenging were those the particular obstacles that they came into contact with. The more you accomplish and the more difficult the obstacles proved for you, the more experience you'll get. Uh, and I throw in some extra kind of stuff for good role play, staying in character and all that good stuff. Uh, number 15, how are traps located? D uh, description, dice rolling, or some combination? Some combination. I don't ask you to go into specific detail about exactly how you're searching for a trap. But basic, you know, enough to say, okay, well, I want to check around the edge of the door, and then I also want to check, you know, at the, the foot of the door to make sure that there's no pressure plates there. And that's good enough for me. Roll your dice, and we'll go from there. Number 16, are retainers encouraged, and how does morale work? Um, retainers are fine. I prefer not to have a whole bunch of lackeys that run around with the party and, and try to solve problems for them and fight monsters for them. Um... But if you can afford retainers and your character wants to acquire retainers, um, that's fine. And usually I'll just ask the, the player to run them most of the time um, until situations arise when I feel that I need to take charge of them. Morale, I don't uh, have any. usually use any specific mechanics to, uh, to account for morale. I basically just use my own best judgment. Uh, if a group of black orcs, uh, they're not going to flee, but you beat up a group of snotlings and the first one or two of them go down and they're going to disperse. Uh, number 17, how do, I how do I identify magic items? Magic items are incredibly rare in my games and uh, there is no you know, magic bullet for determining their properties. Basically unless you're some kind of powerful wizard who can uh, more or less, you know, spend time in a study researching these things, you're going to have to use trial and error. 18, can I buy magic items? Oh, come on, how about just potions? No. Uh, magic items are not the kinds of things that are for sale. Even potions, uh, even potions are really, really rare in my games. I mean, talking about herbs, salves, uh, and that sort of thing, you know, those are those are obviously readily available. But any kind of like magical potion that turns you invisible or makes you run at the at 50 miles an hour or something like that, no, no. You better have good contacts. Uh, can I create magic items? When and how? Um, yes, if you are a wizard lord or basically the head of a magical college or something like that, and you have access to uh, the facilities, the supplies, and the money, and the time, which might be weeks, months, or even years to uh, craft magic items, then yes, you are the kind of lucky, fortunate soul who actually can create something magical. Otherwise, no. Uh, 20, what about splitting the party? I, I prefer the party to stay together, but splitting up happens, and when it does, I'll just try and kind of keep, make sure I've got a good fast-paced back and forth going on with all the individual par uh, party members until I can find a way to bring them back together again. Um, Role-playing is, uh, is a team social interaction experience, so I like to keep the team at the focus and not individual members. But again, it happens sometimes. So I uh, hope you guys found that interesting and informative. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know your own thoughts on these. And see you later.